Last week on SmackDown, we saw a seismic shift in the landscape of the blue brand as Carmelo Hayes issued a United States Championship Open Challenge that was answered by main event Jey Uso arriving on SmackDown after being banished from Monday Night Raw several months ago and accepting Melo's Open Challenge for this singles opportunity. And in the back half of the matchup, main event Jay exploding onto the scene, taking down Carmelo Hayes and capturing his first piece of singles hardware, the United States Championship. We are live tonight on SmackDown, nine nights away from Survivor Series, right here in the ViStar Veterans Memorial in Jacksonville, Florida. And it is gonna be a party here in the Sunshine State. SmackDown's newest acquisition, the United States Championship, now around his waist. Main event, Jey Uso is in the house. Jey Uso's arrival on SmackDown, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. It's, it's JD McDonough running up behind Jay. Watch your back. The hell's McDonough doing out here? Well, Jay Uso realizing he was just ambushed, trying to fight back, but the Irish ace JD McDonough has arrived on the scene and is ambushing the new United States champion. Well, I don't know what this is about, ladies and gentlemen. The former Cruiserweight Champion and JD clearly trying to create some opportunities for himself going after SmackDown's newest talent in Jey Uso. This is not how we planned. Oh, wait a minute, hold on now. Oh my goodness. Headbutt Saito on the stage. We need to get some medical attention out here for Jay. That is not how we plan to kick off tonight here on SmackDown. But as we get some attention for Jay, we look forward to what's going down later tonight here at Jacksonville. Coming up in moments, the Women's World Championship will be on the line as Roxanne Perez defends the gold against Zoe Stark. Also coming up, nine nights away from Survivor Series, Ilya Dragunov set to go to war with the Celtic warrior Sheamus. Dragunov gets McIntyre at Survivor Series on the 16th, but whether or not he picks up this victory tonight will decide if he chooses the stipulation or Drew McIntyre does. Dragunov, Sheamus, they go to war once again right here tonight on SmackDown. Well, the new United States champion, Jey Uso, gonna have to hold that celebration for some time. Hopefully we can get an update on Jay's condition after he was just ambushed by JD McDonough a few moments ago. But nonetheless, we are moving on here in Jacksonville. Zoe Stark has got a bone to pick with a prodigy Roxanne Perez. It dates back to last month on Velocity where Perez used an exposed steel turnbuckle. Follow that up with the Pop Rocks to steal away a win from Zoe Stark. Zoe finally hoped to get in the ring with Perez last week. Roxanne no-showed. Kyrie Sane filled the void. Stark was victorious, but Roxanne Perez got the last laugh, ambushing Stark with the Women's World Championship. And it's all ahead of what is to come in nine nights when the women of Thursday Night SmackDown compete inside war games at Survivor Series. But tonight, it is all about the Women's World Championship. And here comes the champion herself. The prodigy, Roxanne Perez, will stand alongside the Kabuki Warriors as a trio. Kyrie Sane, the Women's Tag Team Champions, Asuka and Io Sky, as they battle their rivals in Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, Zelina Vega and Raquel Rodriguez. All of these women have been at odds for months here on SmackDown. It all comes to a head inside War Games in just nine nights. It is a War Games matchup 
built off greed, broken bonds, gold, respect, and lack thereof it. Something's going to give in Orlando, Florida at Survivor Series. But on a pit stop tonight in Jacksonville, the Women's World Championship is what it's all about. Roxanne Perez has held that gold since August the 17th at SummerSlam. Will she be able to retain it tonight? Or is tonight where Zoe Stark captures her first singles championship here in the WWE? Introducing the challenger from Las Vegas, Nevada, Zoe Stark! And her opponent from the arena, Texas, Certainly a high-profile way to kick things off here on your Thursday night edition of SmackDown. The Women's World Championship on the line as Roxanne Perez pits herself up against Zoe Stark. On a night that'll house another war between Ilya Dragunov and Sheamus stemming from their battle several weeks ago and leading up to the matchup at Survivor Series. All attention also goes to the women's division of SmackDown. As referee Charles Robinson wearing the zebra stripes calls for the bell, the women's world title is on the line. Zoe Stark has had a breakout year here in the WWE. Taken under the wing of Shayna Baszler, really starting to come into her own. Former women's tag team champion. And now finding herself with this singles opportunity right here tonight on SmackDown as she battles the prodigy Roxanne Perez, who has also had an explosive year here on SmackDown. You may not like the attitude that Perez carries around. You may not like the way she conducts herself inside and outside of that ring, but nobody can argue with the results of the Prodigy in 2024. Roxanne Perez going high risk, high reward early, and it pays her dividends. Moonsault right to Zoe Stark on the canvas. This one's not over yet. Impressive feat of agility by the champion. You look ahead to war games and all the interlining stories that will come to head inside of the two rings, surrounded by one giant steel cage. Roxanne Perez stabbing Raquel Rodriguez in the back, all the way back in the month of July, all in a pursuit to obtain the Women's World Championship. Obviously, Roxanne and Raquel have been at odds ever since. Roxanne Perez really stealing another victory away from Raquel Rodriguez. Last month at Bad Blood, Selena Vega's had her opportunities to get in the ring with the Prodigy as well. Somebody who has not taken kindly to Perez's new attitude and especially her actions towards somebody Selena considers a friend in Raquel Rodriguez. Now you got Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler who have also had their problems with the Kabuki Warriors. Back and forth battle for the Tag Team Championships. First in the summer, then bleeding into the fall. Now Zoe Stark interlined with the Kabuki Warriors again last week with Kyrie Sane and now getting her opportunity against Roxanne Perez. Issues stemming from broken bonds and gold and it all comes to a head in nine nights in the Kia Center in Orlando. Zoe Stark has got to keep her focus on tonight right here in Jacksonville. Vistar Veterans Memorial houses Zoe Stark's opportunity to become the women's world champion. Will she make the most of it? So far she's looking good. Off the springboard that time, we have seen inside of that ring that Zoe Stark will stop at nothing to obtain victory. Hell bent on destruction. Off the boot to the side of the dome, almost winning the Women's World Championship, but this one's not over yet. Notice Shayna Baszler not accompanying Zoe Stark out here tonight. Zoe Stark looking to do this thing by herself. Singles opportunity, singles matter. Zoe Stark has got to keep eyes in the back of her head, not necessarily for anybody looming at ringside, but for Roxanne Perez's underhanded tactics. Roxanne Perez has loved to expose the steel in the corner. That is what caused Zoe Stark that matchup on Velocity last month. It's also what helped Roxanne retain her title over Raquel just a few weeks ago with Bad Blood. Roxanne Perez also instituting her interference in Rawls. WWE Women's Championship match of Bad Blood last month helped Cora Jade retain her championship over Bianca Belair. We saw how that came to be. 
In the rematch this past Monday Night on Raw, locked inside a steel cage, Bianca Belair, your new WWE Women's Champion on the red brand, Zoe Stark looking to be the new champion of the blue brand tonight. Springboard dropkick delivers like a missile. But again, Roxanne showing why she is the current rightful holder of the women's world title. Zoe Stark just got to keep her nose to the grindstone in this matchup. Cannot allow Perez's survival instincts to make her frustrated. Zoe Stark's best case scenario tonight, especially with War Games losing and looming, I should say, in nine nights. Zoe finding a way to secure the Women's World Championship, taking away some confidence and some momentum from Roxanne Perez and the Kabuki Warriors. Perez on the outside here. Stark full ahead of steam. Look at the agility. Oh, man. No water in the pool as Roxanne Perez sidesteps and Stark splats on the floor of the Veterans Memorial. A great effort by Zoe that might have just cost her the Women's World Championship. Stark trying to fight, but clearly has got the win knocked out of her. She might be out on her feet. And Roxanne Perez is just letting her have it at ringside. Perez knows the deal. Perez knows that she can retain this championship via countout. And if that's the window she's got to climb through, she will do it. Oof. Once again, sending right to those diamond-plated steel steps. Roxanne Perez, you want to talk about having a breakout year? Look no further. Women's World Championship has been around her waist for several months at this point on SmackDown, and she is not looking for it to leave her side tonight. No matter the enemies she has created, Roxanne Perez continues to rise to greatness. And she is in hopes that Zoe Stark is just another footnote in her championship reign. There's a counter by Stark. Oh, man. And Stark letting Perez have it. Much needed counter. Well timed by tonight's challenger. See that sign out in the audience says calculated and vicious. And I think that is an incredible way to describe Zoe Stark's offense inside of that ring. Will she be able to get the three count tonight? All remains to be seen. We are live in the Veterans Memorial here on SmackDown. Jacksonville, Florida, nine nights away from Survivor Series. Already tonight, the new United States champion, Jey Uso. A celebration cut short by the Irish ace, J.D. McDonough, ambushing him in the aisle way. And still to come, Ilya Dragunov, who fell short to Sheamus recently here on SmackDown, runs it back tonight with Survivor Series stakes at stake. This fight getting taken a ringside. Oh, man, Paige Turner on the floor by Perez, taking inspiration to, from some of her childhood idols. And Zoe Stark not looking good ever since that splat at ringside a few minutes ago. She has seen some signs of life, but the prodigy has really taken over. The champion dictating the pace is exactly what Roxanne wanted upon her arrival to the squared circle tonight. There's Zoe Stark great in some distance. A little bit slow to capitalize here. She's got a stick and move. Wait a minute. Small package here by the challenger to win the title. Not just yet. Zoe Stark trying anything she can to keep down the champion. Opportunities like this don't come around every day. It's Stark is trying to make the most of it, especially ahead of Survivor Series. Perez back inside the ring, but just walked into the waiting arms of the challenger. Perez dazed, Perez confused. Zoe Stark lining it up for a Z360 to win the title. Not just yet. Not just yet, Roxanne Perez is still alive. Jacksonville, Florida, an appreciation of the efforts of these two women as Stark comes off the top rope with a high elevation knee. Oh, hold on, Perez might have caught her slipping. Business starting to pick up in your opening contest tonight on Thursday, Night Smackdown. A sense of urgency as Roxanne Perez realizes she was almost out after that Z360. 
Perez showing some championship instincts, showing what brought her to the dance, able to survive at least for a moment. But can she continue to thrive as she is now the aggressor in this championship match? Zoe Stark not looking to allow a rally here. Oh man, referee Charles Robinson's gonna get the hell out of the way, get the hell out of Dodge. Perez starting to unload. Jacksonville on their feet for what has been an incredible Women's World Championship matchup nine nights before our trip to Orlando in Survivor Series. See the fatigue of this matchup starting to set in as Zoe Stark up in the corner, being held up by the buckles, and now Perez gonna muscle her down with the arm drag. Into the cover, Charles Robinson in the zebra stripes only says it was a two count. And Roxanne now, rubbing some salt in the wounds. Zoe Stark looking worse for wear. Perez, lining her up for a pop, rocks and it delivers. And Roxanne Perez gonna retain her championship. An incredible effort by tonight's challenger and the up and coming Zoe Stark. But the prodigy holding on to her championship and sustaining the momentum for her squad in just nine nights inside war games at Survivor Series. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting some breaking news regarding right here tonight on SmackDown. JD McDonough ambushing Jay before this contest. And evidently, the United States Championship is gonna be on the line right here tonight. The Irish Ace played his cards correct. Main event Jay Uso is right in the line of fire. Right here tonight on SmackDown, the red, white, blue, and gold will be on the line. When the tension rises and the war on the battlefield begins, there is only one thing for these superstars to do. Survive! Coming your way on Saturday night, November 16th, for the Kia Center in Orlando, Florida. Witness the 2024 edition of the Fall Classic as the superstars of Raw and SmackDown, along with Noah Nation Gaming channel memberships, proudly present Survivor Series! Well, we take you back to last week's number one contenders matchup for the World Championship. Drew McIntyre up against John. Cena, Ilya Dragunov, and his issues with the Scottish Warrior really rearing their head during this contest. Dragunov getting an ounce of revenge for everything that McIntyre has put him through in recent months. Taking McIntyre's eye off the ball and allowing John Cena to capitalize, securing number one contendership. The franchise on his way to Survivor Series in nine nights to face that man, the world heavyweight champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. You know, this is not the first time in the last 12 plus months that Cody Rhodes and John Cena have been inside the squared circle with each other. Last October, Cena challenged Cody Rhodes for the United States title at Clash at the Castle. Cody was the victor on that night. Will John Cena become a 17-time world champion, changing the result of 13 months ago? We find out in just nine nights at Survivor Series. Certainly a massive bout in the SmackDown main event come Orlando, Florida. But we are still here in Jacksonville with so much more action on hand. Angelo Dawkins of the Street Profits has got his own issues to settle. Montez Ford absent tonight because of the actions of the D'Angelo family. Angelo Dawkins has not forgotten, and he's looking to take this family out head on. By himself is what he's got to do, and he's up against Stax one on one. And his opponent, accompanied by Tony D'Angelo, representing 
the D'Angelo family from Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 232 pounds. Well, we want to take you back to just a few weeks ago when the D'Angelo family sent a little bit of a message. We saw this mafia-like footage, and Stax had ambushed Montez Ford in the parking garage. Absolutely brutal. You'll see here Ford's hand getting crushed right into that car door. Stax obviously not only sending a message to the Street Profits, but to the entire SmackDown locker room. Tony D'Angelo and Stax have not been afraid to make some enemies since their arrival here on SmackDown back in September. The Street Profits, the tandem they have been at odds with, after what we saw a few weeks ago, I think Stax is looking to finally get rid of their Street Profits problem right here tonight. Tony D'Angelo and Stax defeated the Street Profits in their SmackDown debut. Tony D even owns a singles victory over Montez Ford. And it was the Street Profits who finally got back at the D'Angelo family in a tag team victory just a few weeks ago. And then we saw, as we mentioned, that mafia-like message sent by Tony D, getting rid, taking care of Montez Ford. Now Angelo Dawkins, as one brother would, would love to get retribution on Montez Ford's behalf. Unfortunately, the number's not in his favor tonight. And Stax and Tony D have clearly shown they are not afraid to get the blood on their hands if it means being a success here on SmackDown. Some of SmackDown's newest comers in the D'Angelo family finding out what it's like to compete here on the blue brand. There's Angelo Dawkins. He's got to keep his eye on the boy. Seeing Tony D at ringside, that's not going to help his cause. Stax looking to take advantage here. I think it's going to take a lot more to keep a motivated Angelo Dawkins down here tonight on SmackDown. It stacks with a full head of steam. He has been all over AD since this matchup kicked off. Or maybe don't speak too soon. Stacks starting to showboat, and Angelo Dawkins making him pay his price. Dawkins did not make the trip to Jacksonville tonight, just to find himself sitting alongside Montez Ford on the shelf. Street Profits, ever since joining SmackDown in the draft all the way back in April, have been trying to find their footing and especially find their way to Tag Team Championship contention. The D'Angelo family, just their recent roadblock that Angelo Dawkins is looking to mow over once and for all here tonight. Suplex on the outside, ain't nothing pretty about it, but certainly gonna be effective. Stacks feeling the brunt of the muscle of the Street Profits. Dare I say, Angelo Dawkins, almost a full package inside of that ring in terms of size, strength, and agility. Channing Lorenzo of the D'Angelo family, of course, alongside the Don of SmackDown and Tony D himself have done their homework. Angelo Dawkins, dipping and dodging, cutting stacks in half of the spear. This one could be over with. Stax going home in a blaze of glory, but unfortunately for AD, this one's not done just yet. Angelo Dawkins all kinds of fired up. Unfortunately, Channing Lorenzo has got family business to take care of. And close fist looks like right to the mouth and a boot for his troubles. And the D'Angelo family is just gritty inside of that ring. Born and bred on the streets, mafia business, the Don of SmackDown and Tony D'Angelo calling the shots for the family. Stack's gonna do one good by him. Angelo Dawkins once again looking up at the lights here at the Veterans Memorial. Stacks measuring his man. I don't like this. Oh my goodness! A knee stomp right to the back of the neck, down to the floor. This one's over with. The D'Angelo family continues to push their way around. Well, you hate to see it for Angelo Dawkins trying to do one good by Montez Ford after the ambush a couple of weeks ago was not to be. The D'Angelo family taking care of family business here on SmackDown. Well, you want to talk about ambushes. 
Look no further than what happened just last week right here on the blue brand. The Apex Predator Randy Orton returned to action for the first time since Hell in the Cell at Bad Blood. Unfortunately for Orton, a matchup never was to be had. Austin Theory ambushing a man who he's been hanging around the last few months. There has been an alliance, a trio of sort, between A-Town Down Under and the Apex Predator Randy Orton, seemingly all built on helping each other get back championship gold. But after Randy Orton fell short in Hell in the Cell to Cody Rhodes, Theory, a sacrificial lamb several weeks ago, Theory clearly drawing a line in the sand, A-Town Down Under cutting their ties with Randy Orton. That was only the first of the trouble that Theory caused. We take you back to yesterday afternoon on Velocity. The LWO victorious in their contest, only to be sidelined by A-Town Down Under. Theory and Waller, an unwelcome guest on Velocity after Mysterio and Dragon Lee's victory 24 hours ago. Well, Theory and Waller have got one goal in mind, and that's getting back the WWE Tag Team title. They took care of Randy Orton. They sent a message to the LWO yesterday afternoon. Now we look forward to next week. Rey Mysterio, Dragon Lee, they'll put the Tag Team titles on the line against Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. But coming up next, right here in Jacksonville, Florida, main event, Jey Uso defends his newly won United States Championship against a former Cruiserweight Champion in the Iris Ace, J.D. McDonough. It's up next on SmackDown. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way exclusively each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code, follow on TikTok, and don't miss a second of Velocity. A man who once ruled SmackDown with an iron fist, the former World Heavyweight Champion, the Ring General, Guther, returns to singles action for the first time since SummerSlam this Saturday at Fall Brawl. Guther set to go one-on-one -on -one with the Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne. The Ring General is looking to start down a new path. He takes on the Bruiserweight in just 48 hours. Also coming up at the No One Aging Gaming Channel member exclusive event, the megastar LA Knight returns to action for the first time since the Raw season premiere. He's up against Baron Corbin in what should be a physical clash. And also from the red brand, the world tag team titles are on the line. The Judgment Day prepare for war games, but they make a pit stop as they battle Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa of DIY. Full brawl coming up this Saturday for No Nation Gaming channel members. Well, be sure to hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards and don't miss your opportunity to tune in to Fall Brawl this Saturday night from Tallahassee, Florida. But we are here in Jacksonville and JD McDonough has certainly created an opportunity for himself at a matter of moments tonight on SmackDown. We take you back to earlier on. Jey Uso approaching the squared circle, ready to address the WWE Universe since arriving on SmackDown. Unfortunately, J.D. McDonough ambushing him in the aisle way, and then this physical headbutt Saito combination laying out Jay on the top of the stage. Well, this is McDonough's first action since falling short in the Cruiserweight Classic several weeks ago, and of course that tournament continues this Sunday as WWE Tag Team Champion Dragon Lee takes on Wesley in the semifinal round. And a man who J.D. McDonough knows very well, that being the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, will defend his Cruiserweight Championship against Chad Gable in the semifinals. The Cruiserweight Classic Tournament continues live this Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time. 
J.D. McDonough looking to break out of the cruiserweight division and become the new United States Champion. Let's try this again. But instead of a microphone in his hand, I think Jey Uso is going to be ready to clinch up his fist. Arriving on the scene here on SmackDown last Thursday night, defeating Carmelo Hayes in Melo's own open challenge and winning his first singles championship in his illustrious 14-year WWE career. Main event Jey Uso, the United States Champion. Oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Jay's not waiting for a bell, going right at J.D. McDonough. Well, you think Jay was not gonna be upset after what transpired about a half hour ago here at the Veterans Memorial. J.D. McDonough wanted his opportunity. Jay saying, fine, I'll give it to you and we're gonna do things my way. Here's the energy you're gonna have to meet. Bell has sounded, we are underway. The United States Championship is on the line here on SmackDown. J.D. McDonough trying to slow down a very high energetic Jey Uso in the early moments of this matchup. The former cruiserweight champion not to be undermined. The Irish ace obviously played his cards correct and Jey Uso is gonna be in for a struggle tonight. We saw Jay last week. A little bit of an advantage on his side. Carmelo Hayes having to think on his feet. After that open challenge that he put himself in, Jey Uso was able to capitalize on the opportunity. Tonight, a bit of a more even playing field. Both of these gentlemen with the last half hour or so to prepare for this contest. Jay obviously still feeling the effects of what transpired at the top of the stage. Whether Jey Uso is banged up or not, he is here on SmackDown to be what he already calls himself, the main event. And that comes in opportunities like this, championship affairs, defending your title at the highest honor. JD McDonough trying to play spoiler and trying to break out of the pack of the cruiserweight division and into a new limelight here on SmackDown by spoiling Jey Uso's United States Championship reign before it can truly get going. Suicide dive of his own. And business picking up in a fast matter here on SmackDown tonight. You could almost cut the tension with a knife. The tension that is in the air, nine nights away from Survivor Series and so many high stakes bout already on the marquee. Right now, J.D. McDonough is not focused on Survivor Series, is not focused on anybody else's business but himself. J.D. McDonough, all the tools to be a success. As we mentioned, a former Cruiserweight Champion. Also competed in the Cruiserweight Classic just a few weeks ago, was knocked out of the first round by a rival of his in Tyler Bate, who continues to be a part of the tournament. Clearly, J.D. McDonough itching to find himself a new path on SmackDown. And whether you like the way he went about it or not, look at the opportunity that has presented itself. Now McDonough's got to deal with the repercussions of fighting this wild Samoan inside of the ring. You know, we talked about it a little bit last week, but of course Jay and Jimmy Uso banished from Monday Night Raw back in the month of September by Damian Priest and Finn Balor of the Judgment Day. Many thought that was all she wrote for the Usos in WWE. Jimmy Uso still yet to make a return to either SmackDown, NXT, or any brand here in the WWE. Who knows if he'll ever be back inside the squared circle. But Jey Uso finding himself a singles opportunity and is looking to prove his worth here on SmackDown. Heel over the top. JD McDonough may be out on his feet. First singles championship in Jey Uso's 14-year illustrious career in World Wrestling Entertainment. And JD McDonough is finding out why. Whether it's singles or tag team action, Jey Uso has been a success. Certainly not what we expected when we came on the air tonight for SmackDown was this United States Championship bout. But nonetheless, here we are. Devil inside as McDonough catches Jay. And Dan Near won the United States Championship that time. 
Man, imagine if Jay can turn this whole thing, or I should say if JD can turn this whole thing on its head and knock Jey Uso out to win the United States Championship. Strangle, hold like submission locked in. He's got the head twerk, the leg tangled up. Jey Uso nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. The Irish ace with many a tricks up his sleeve. Trying to create some distance that time. You gotta believe some damage has been done. Madonna springboard tornado DDT. And think about what happened earlier tonight. How Jey Uso was already gotta be feeling that shoulder and head region. Uso continuing to survive in this matchup, but JD McDonough is dictating the pace and he is bringing the pressure on the champion. Jey Uso struggling right now to find a window of opportunity to get back in this matchup. JD McDonough with a poison Rana. It may be academic from here. The party may be over. J.D. McDonough saw an opportunity earlier tonight, and he struck. And it may be coming to benefit him. A second Spanish fly. J.D. McDonough is nearing the finish line, and we may be crowning our second new United States champion in a matter of weeks. Go for the head, but again, if McDonough hits that maneuver just like he did earlier tonight, It'll certainly be all she wrote, but Jey Uso is not going to let it slide. Pop up neck breaker, McDonough kicks out. Jey Uso realizing that his back is against the wall right now. Saw his championship rain flash before his eyes. A well timed reversal. Now giving Jey Uso some daylight here as he crushes McDonough in the corner. Full head of steam. You gotta commend the effort, especially with the fatigue that has gotta be playing a factor. Jey Uso trying new rally. Sending McDonough to the ropes. Oh man, kick to the gut. And a disrespectful shot to the face. No love lost for Jey Uso and JD McDonough. We've got ourselves a great contest here for the title. J.D. McDonough muscling Jay down to win the gold. Not just yet. Spear by Jay. Uso catching him. And this one's over. What a contest for the United States title. J.D. McDonough looking to travel down a new path on SmackDown. Created an opportunity for himself tonight. Unfortunately for JD, Jay is on top of his game and is still the rightful holder of the gold. Here is your winner, and still WWE United States Champion, Main Event, Jay Main Event. Jey Uso arriving seven nights ago in glorious fashion. And he rides that momentum right here to Jacksonville. Taking on JD McDonough in an impromptu bout and retaining his title. And oh man, the former United States champion, Carmelo Hayes, drawing a line in the sand. You had to believe Melo was gonna be wanting his shot. When Carmelo Hayes shoots, he usually doesn't miss. Are we looming with a rematch? Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how Universe Mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more Universe than ever before.
At War Games, it'll be four on four, but who will have the advantage throughout the matchup? Well, we find that out next Thursday night. Kyrie Sane representing her unit. Shayna Baszler representing the opposing side. They go one on one for the Survivor Series War Games advantage next Thursday. And it is all on the road to nine nights from now. Kia Center, Orlando, Florida, Survivor Series War Games. Kyrie Sane, the women's tag team champions, Io Sky and Asuka, the women's world champion, Roxanne Perez. They battle Baszler, Stark, Selena Vega, and Raquel Rodriguez inside War Games. And just as tensions have continued to rise on SmackDown, the same can be said for Monday Night Raw, the men's war games matchup, as the WWE Champion AJ Styles, alongside Dirty Dom, Finn Balor, and Damian Priest, take on the all-star unit of Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Seth freaking Rollins, and CM Pong. This past Monday Night on Raw, a new women's champion was crowned. Bianca Belair taking down Cora Jade inside of the steel cage. Now Bianca walks into her first championship defense against the Queen of the Ring winner, the center of the universe, Tiffany Stratton. They go one-on-one -on -one for the women's championship a week from Saturday. In the SmackDown main event, John Cena is chasing his 17th trip to the top of the mountain, but it will not be an easy path. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes has had a banner year in 2024. Respect absolutely there, but when the bell sounds, it is all or nothing for the World Heavyweight Championship. Ilya Dragunov has been seeking revenge on Drew McIntyre ever since McIntyre laid him to waste the night of Money in the Bank back in July. Drew has tore through Dragunov time and time again in hopes of getting back the World Heavyweight Championship. Ilya a constant roadblock. They meet once again at Survivor Series. The question remains, who is going to choose the stipulation for this matchup? Will it be Ilya? Will it be Drew? We find out right here tonight in your Thursday Night SmackDown main event. Sheamus will represent McIntyre in yet another battle with the Man Dragon. The last time these two individuals met, they went to war on October the 10th. Sheamus was the victor on that night. Dragunov needs a stroke of luck to keep down the Celtic Warrior here in Jacksonville. A man who thrives off pain and punishment. No matter how many times you knock him down, Dragunov continues to fly like a dragon, spewing his fire and tearing apart anybody in his way. Win, lose, or draw, Ilya gets back up, and McIntyre and Sheamus have found that out time and time again over the last few months. If Ilya's got to go to war with Sheamus once again, then so be it. He looks at it as a just another roadblock to finally getting his retribution on the man who embarrassed him, on the man who pummeled him back in the O2 in London in July. That is Drew McIntyre. McIntyre was the victor in their one-on-one -on -one match at SummerSlam. Ilya Dragunov has been chasing another round ever since. He gets it at Survivor Series. The ante will be upped. Whose decision will that be? Ilya Dragunov looks ready for war as he always does. And he better be ready because the Celtic warrior Sheamus took him down last month here on SmackDown. It's the return match here tonight. Well, dare I say, conspicuous by his absence is the Scottish warrior himself, Drew McIntyre. Remember, he was in Sheamus' corner all the way back on October the 10th, and I think played a pivotal role in helping Sheamus get the victory on that night. It looks like the Celtic warrior, at least for now, is going this one alone against Ilya. If Ilya dragging off his victorious tonight, he can choose any stipulation he likes when he meets Drew McIntyre in Orlando, Florida, one week from Saturday. If Sheamus gets the victory,
to the victor goes the spoils passes off the responsibilities to drew mcintyre it'll be mcintyre's decision on what the stipulation will be a hell of a lot riding on this rematch between sheamus and dragon off here tonight but no matter what Sheamus gonna give Dragon off hell. Ilya welcomes it, but can he survive it? The bell has sounded. We are underway with your SmackDown main event. It has been an action-packed night as it always is here on Thursday Night SmackDown. Ilya hot out of the gate. We expect nothing less. What Dragon off cannot do is be overzealous and cause himself to make a mistake, but Ilya all over Sheamus in the early moments, trying to put this thing to bed rest for good. Gonna take a hell of a lot more to keep Sheamus down. Dragging off either A, trying to catch Sheamus by surprise, or B, just trying to force him to extend some energy off that kick out. Where Dragging off tried to start the matchup all the way back on October the 10th in a very similar fashion. High energy from the Mad Dragon. Did not work out. Sheamus really dictated the pace the early part of that matchup. Sheamus really did a hell of a lot of damage to Ilya on that night. Well, that is something that Sheamus really needed, if you will, was that victory over Ilya Dragunov last month here on SmackDown. We've seen a new leaf turned over by the Celtic Warrior, realigning with his old friend and the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. McIntyre really called Sheamus out on social media months ago, saying that Sheamus had lost his edge, lost what made him a former champion inside of the ring. It really got under the skin of the Celtic Warrior, and eventually Sheamus started listening to everything that McIntyre was spewing. Now we have seen a much more aggressive Sheamus over the last few months here on SmackDown. Rest assured, Ilya Dragunov will not say die here tonight. Ilya knows that one way or another, he's going to get Drew McIntyre at Survivor Series, but certainly so much riding on this matchup. God only knows what McIntyre's going to have in mind if Sheamus is victorious. You know, it's any stipulation that could be chosen. For all we know, Sheamus is victorious. McIntyre goes and makes that match a handicap at Survivor Series. Hopefully, Ilya Dragunov is not going to have to find that out. We have heard words from Dragunov in recent weeks saying no matter who knocks him down how many times he gets knocked down no matter if his flesh wounds if he bleeds if he breaks bodies breaks bones he will continue to get on his feet and fight and that is what we are seeing here on smackdown as he sends sheamus to the outside and i think the wheels of the czar are spinning here suicide dive sends sheamus like a bullet into the announce table Sheamus is going to feel that one on Friday morning. Ilya showing that there is no stone to be left unturned in pursuit of victory. Ilya Dragunov, former Intercontinental Champion, Cruiserweight Champion, NXT United Kingdom Champion, last year's Cruiserweight Classic winner. Something we have talked about throughout that tournament has really helped propel Dragunov to becoming one of the faces of SmackDown. Got Sheamus on the outside here. I don't think it is wise for Ilya to break things down. You know, a damn near Belfast brawl with the Irishman, but Dragunov does not give a damn. He will match Sheamus' energy no matter the style. Sending him right into the barrier. Dare I say, Ilya Dragunov in firm control of this matchup right now. That suicide dive really helping change the tides here in this contest. Back inside the ring we go. Sheamus in hot pursuit of the man Dragon. Dragon off might have just go to the men. Here he goes. German suplex takes down Sheamus. Referee Chad Patton losing his balance. Ilya Dragon off looking sharp after everything that McIntyre and Sheamus have put him through. Remember just a few weeks ago, McIntyre, that backstage attack on Dragon off. Dragon off's calf have. Caught that glass window, and Dragunov was taken out of the building on that night. Needed stitches. Off the top rope, and Sheamus still alive. Ilya Dragunov continues to show that no matter what fire is spewed his way, he will meet it. 
There's Sheamus trying to fight back here and not allow a rally from the Mad Dragon once again. Here on SmackDown, the Celtic Warrior looking to assert his dominance for the second time in a row in singles action with the Mad Dragon. I'll tell you what, Sheamus may be fighting this battle alongside Drew McIntyre, but all the while, McIntyre is looking to get rid of Ilya Dragunov and find himself back in a position to challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship. If Sheamus continues to pick up victories, where is Sheamus going to lie in pursuit of the big gold belt? All remains to be seen in due time. Sheamus going for a hat trick of Irish curse backbreakers. Drag it off nearly snapped in half, but still with enough wherewithal to muscle that shoulder off the canvas. Sheamus obviously with the size and strength advantage in this matchup. Power on his side. Looked to be going for the bro kick. Dragunov sidestepped it. Dragunov not looking for that boot to deliver the same bro kick that put him down last month. Here's Ilya. Realizing there's a window of opportunity. He's looking to climb through it. Couple of reversals on top of Sheamus and Dragunov finds himself the aggressor. Sheamus sent back into the corner. Ilya's body language starting to read fatigue. And no matter what, Ilya Dragunov will fight to a bitter broken end. Oh man, send in Sheamus for an amusement park right off the top. What a night it has been on SmackDown. Some great in-ring action. Jacksonville, Florida on their feet. Sheamus putting on the brakes moments ago. Muscles Ilya to the outside. Distance created by the Dragon. Another hard shot just trying to back the Celtic Warrior up. But he walks right into a pair of axe hammers. And a tilt to world back slam for his trouble. Sheamus into the cover. Maybe all she wrote. Some fire, some fury out of the Celtic Warrior, but Ilya Dragunov still alive. How many times have we seen Dragunov get knocked down in 2024 and continue to get back up? No matter if it was against Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, JD McDonough, Guther, we've seen Ilya in absolute wars in this calendar year. And yet he is still on the soles of his boots Continuing to swing, continuing to fight. Now the Mad Dragon perched on the top, measuring his man. Headbutt right to the dome of the Celtic Warrior. This one's not over yet. Very enthusiastic kick out, almost seemed urgent, desperate by Sheamus. Might have saw this matchup flash before his eyes. That headbutt might have had Sheamus loopy for a few seconds there. Ilya Dragunov may have his man where he wants him. He's got to put this thing away. Dragunov, look at the strength. Power bomb. Damn near sending Sheamus through the ring. Sheamus, small package here. Ilya kicks out. Man, how fast the tides can change. In this war of attrition between Sheamus and Ilya. Hat trick of elbows that time. As Dragunov used the ropes to get to his feet. There's some boots for Sheamus. Torpedo Moscow. Sheamus just collapses. Ilya caught him. Dragunov conquers the Celtic Warrior. After being put down by Sheamus inside of that ring last month, it is Ilya Dragunov who rises like a phoenix, conquers Sheamus here tonight, and will choose the stipulation for his battle against Drew McIntyre one week from Saturday. Here is your winner, Ilya I will tell you, man, I don't know if there's any man that can keep down Ilya Dragunov for good. A huge victory. And, oh, wait a minute. Drew McIntyre is approaching the ring, ambushing Ilya. Claymore kick. 
Well, what did we say? Conspicuous by his absence, Drew McIntyre allowing Sheamus to fight this battle by himself. It does not go his way in. Oh man, I believe Ilya has been busted wide open. The Claymore and the closed fist. Ilya Dragunov within seconds has been laid to waste. Not the chair, not the chair. Drew McIntyre making good on his promise months ago to destroy Ilya once and for all. This is not good. Nine nights before Survivor Series, Dragunov surviving a battle with Sheamus here on SmackDown and McIntyre's beating the brakes off him. Ilya is bleeding. Dragunov is busted wide open. And Drew McIntyre is savoring in this beatdown. This is not good. Ilya Dragunov victorious tonight. But looks, for, looks to be the farthest from a winner if you just based it off an eye test. Just collapsing. Just as Sheamus did off the Torpedo Moscow. Dragunov has got to have no idea where he is at the current moment. Referee Chad Patton helpless to get in the way of Drew McIntyre here as McIntyre's cleared off the table. Dragunov is on his feet. Ilya, for the love of all that's mighty, just stay down. Dragunov trying to fight back, but Drew McIntyre, obviously the way fresher individual in this brawl. Oh no. Dragunov's on the table. I'm starting to see flashbacks to Money in the Bank in July. God damn it, drag it off through the table. Drew McIntyre once again. Laying Ilya to waste. Something's gotta give. McIntyre will meet Dragunov a week from Saturday at Survivor Series War Games.